All right, sinners, welcome back to another video on our channel here. Right now, I'm going to have a look at the brand new, soon to be released. I'm doing this video before I even put them in the store because I want to make sure that everybody's got a tutorial feature video they can have a look at. Soon to be released, Simple Needs Ocularum 2 Third Eye. In particular, this one is going to be the Uvash. This is a horizontal eye. For those that are Lovecrafty and in the know, assuming you're not going to give me too much of a hard time about the way I'm pronouncing that. I hope that's correct. That's one of the names I borrowed from the Cthulhu Mythos. They're famous for eyes and tentacles, so it seems appropriate. So this is the horizontal eye. This is what the box looks like, or the package, I should say. Uh, in case you're not already familiar with it, I've switched away from wearing as a bag and now wears as a HUD. If you res it on the ground, it'll still show as a bag. It should still unpack itself and self-delete. But if you wear it, it comes on as a HUD so that you can get convenient access to a couple of links here to the main store or SL Marketplace. You can hop on over to Facebook real quick, give us a like or a follow. You can get our group joiner link or you can get my profile pulled up so that you can shoot me an IM if you've got a question. I've already unpacked this so we can go ahead and disconnect this by clicking on the X there and we'll come to our folder. Now in the folder you'll see that there are three different versions of this third eye, A, B, and C. Now the difference between these is not how they look, they all look exactly the same, the aesthetics are the same. If you are wearing the Simple Needs animated mesh eyes, you are going to want to wear the version A. And the version A takes its dilation cues from the right eye, just like the left eye does, so that all three of them can stay in sync. If you're not using the Simple Needs eyes, you'll want to use the version B. The version B generates its own dilation cues so that uh, it, it can have all the animation without having to pick up anything from the simple new dies. And since you're not going to be worried about sync then for the dilation, it doesn't matter. The version C, think of it as a submissive to the B or the A. If you were to wear a B and wear one or two C's with it, then the B would tell the C's when to dilate. Uh, same thing, the A would also tell the C when to dilate. So this is kind of a little extra thing. Uh, you guys that are in your group might have seen me pass around a screenshot when I was working on this the other day where I had three of the third eyes down my forehead. It looked actually pretty cool. And they were synced because the smaller two were the version C and they were picking up their cues for the looking around and stuff from the A and everything was synced to the right eye dilation. Anyway, so simple display here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to add the version A. You'll see it appear on the forehead wearing one of the default skin tones. Uh, this is actually one of the tones that is on the included skin HUD that comes with it. Now this is just a forehead skin. I will warn you in advance, if you are wearing an Omega compatible head and you are wearing the relay for that head, if you click on one of these, you're going to see weird stuff happen to your face. If you have an Omega skin applier, use that instead, you won't even need this. If you don't have an Omega skin applier, take off the relay for your head or take off the head so that you don't wind up giving yourself a weird blurry face. Um, if you need to use one of these tones, you'd want to use the one that is closest to your skin tone on your head, but slightly lighter. And then you could use the tinting in the control HUD to dial it in the rest of the way. If you were going to apply one of these, you would just click on the button here and it'll change. And then you go from there. Like if I was going to try an RGB tint this to match, I would pick tone uh, 6 here. This is tone 1, 2, 2 and a half, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 from the Juno and Jupiter lines. And then this is just a grayscale tone that will be friendly to brightly colored skins that don't want any of the warmth in any of these natural skin colors. I, however, don't have to worry about fighting with the RGB tinting to match. If you were going to do that, I'll give you a quick run through on how you would do it. You choose the one that's close. You get that out of the way and then we're going to go back to our control HUD. You would go to the materials pane. You would make sure you activate the eyelids. 
and then you would come into the RGB thing here, the picker, and you would start picking RGB tones if you needed to make it a little bit lighter, you'd make it lighter. And this isn't a perfect match, obviously, it's a little too yellow, but you get the idea. That's how you would skin match without an applier. Now, fortunately, I have an applier, so let's clear the tint. Let's minimize, well, I don't even need to minimize, let me find my skin applier. And I'm going to apply the head, and boom, there we go. My skin now matches my eyelid. My eyelid matches my skin. Now I'm going to do the same thing for my tattoo. There is a tattoo layer on here that is also Omega compatible. So I'm going to wear my Ghost Ink applier here. I am going to apply it to the tattoo layer. And boom, now my tattoo is applied. And you'll notice, like for the eyes, you don't have to wear any Omega Relay for this. The Simple Needs Omega products are pre-installed so that you don't ever have to worry about hunting down a relay. Now, if you were to move the eye down on your forehead, you would see that these textures would no longer be lined up. Now, I'm about to show you how you deal with that. We're going to open our control HUD up, and we're going to change a few things. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure we uncheck the right and the left, because we don't want to be moving the right eye and the left eye around. We're going to come to the mesh, and I'm going to move the eye down. And just move it down an arbitrary amount here. And then we'll move it forward so it's not clipping into the head. And then if you watch my animated mesh eyes video, you know that I like to angle the eyes down just a little bit because it looks more natural. If you look from the side, you can see that these don't match. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate the third eye to match so that it's got the same kind of look to it. Then I'm going to fix the issue with the skin and tattoo. I'm going to come back to materials here. And we already picked the eyelids here when we were experimenting with the RGB tinting to color match. Make sure you've got that selected because that's where the changes are going to take place. And then we're going to click on the Simple Needs logo here to bring up the menu. And we're going to go under Texture. Now, what we can do here is we can adjust the position and the size. We can do some other stuff that isn't necessarily going to be useful on the skin. But we're going to adjust the position here. Since we slid the eye down, we're going to want to slide the texture up. So, click the up arrow here. We adjust the skin and the tattoo layer. They both adjust until it moves up a little bit. Now, it's pretty close on the top and on the bottom. On the sides, it's off a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell it we're done there, and then we're going to come back into it, and we're going to go to texture, size, and we're going to adjust the width of the texture. We're going to zoom in on the x-axis of the texture so that it stretches out a little bit from left to right. Now this is already set to 5%, which is probably where I'm going to want it to be, but just as a reminder, this is your increment, this is 1%. If you make a 1% change, there's a very slight change there. It's almost not noticeable and it's not going to be enough for us. So we're going to go ahead and go to 5%. It also goes to 10% if you need to make a big change. So we'll go back to 5. Like you can see there, you just click on it to change it between 1, 5, and 10%. And then we're going to click on the X plus again and we're going to stretch that out a little bit more horizontally. You can see as we look around now that mostly that's a pretty good match. Um, probably if we were to fiddle with the position of the eye a little bit. Let's see, let's close our menu and go back to the mesh. Maybe nudge it up just a hair here. That's much better on the top and the bottom. And if I go to the menu again, texture, size, maybe. Now I'm going to want to go back down to that 1%, stretch it just a little bit more on the X. And that's pretty close. That's a darn fine match. It's not 100% perfect, but considering that it's a third eye sticking out of your forehead, it's bound to be a little bit different because the way the texture stretches around the third eye is obviously going to be different 
than it would be just off the smooth forehead. Now you could tweak things a little bit more if you wanted to. You could maybe slide the eye over just a little bit and it would be a little bit better match. The truth of the matter is, is that I'm up at 4,000 meters right now, so there's going to be a little bit of variance caused by us that weirdness anyway. I'm going to say that that's good enough for now. So we'll tell it we're done. We're done messing with the skin and the tattoo. So I'm going to come back to the materials and I'm going to flip this back up to the eyeball because the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to match that eye texture that we applied to the eyes. Now if you watch the other video you know that I applied this is the uh, feral red serpentine split slit from one of my eye appliers. I could reapply that, manually reapply the glow, but if you watch that video you know I already saved that setting on my other HUD. So I am going to minimize my control HUD, or you could detach it, but I'm going to use the post stand so I'm going to leave it on. I'm going to add my control HUD from my uh, animated mesh eyes. I am going to go to the memory slot that I have saved the thing to and you might remember that uh, this one does not have the glow and stuff and this one does have the glow and stuff. Now I have successfully applied it to my third eye. You'll know that this, notice this only says right and left eye on it. It does actually include the third eye by default. That's so that you can continue to use this HUD for your texture changes if you want to. You just won't be able to change um, only the third eye if you wanted to do some of the other changes. But now that we have this texture applied to the third eye, we can detach the animated eyes control HUD. We can go back to the third eye control HUD. We can go to a memory slot on that HUD and we can save it. Uh, I've already saved one version here, but I'll go ahead and save over it. And if, for instance, we wanted to then change the other eyes to something else, we could do whatever we wanted on this side uh, by unchecking the third eye. And it wouldn't change the third eye. Uh, you could even go totally crazy off the rails and you could use three different eye colors there if you wanted to. Alright, now that we've got all of our textures here the same, well, I'll tell you what, let's do this. Let's go ahead and go to one of the human pupil eye textures without all that glow so that you can get a better look at the animations. We're going to go back to the pose panel. And like the other eyes, the regular animated mesh eyes, you can control the dilation here. You can choose to lock the dilation if you want to turn that off. You can also still control the eye movement here. You'll notice that when you do the eye movement poses here, it also moves the third eye. Now what it's doing is it's adjusting the position of the eyeball in the third eye and it's playing a bento animation. So it's not perfectly synced, but it's pretty close. Now the other animations that are available on here, and if you want to mess with the pupil dilation controls, you should check out the animated eyes video because it goes into detail on that. In this video, I'm going to skip over here and I'm going to go to show you the blinking and the looking around animation. And the first thing that you're going to want to do is decide whether or not you want to use the lashes. That toggle is here. There are lashes that are available on here and those lashes are also set up to accept Omega eyelash appliers. I happen to know that Shelly's been working on that. We're going to get Omega eyelash appliers sometime here in the very near future. So these are already ready for that when it happens. Um, the other buttons that you're going to see here are regular eye pose buttons. Now, with nothing else clicked, without the sync checked, these poses on the eyelids only affect the third eye. So you could put your third eye to sleep. You could creep it open if you wanted to and leave it static. Um, or you can have it blink. And there's a regular blink. And then there's a fast blink. It's slightly faster. 
Um, if you want your bento head eyelids to cooperate and stay synced with your third eye, what you're going to want to do is make sure that you have turned off the blink on your head. Like I'm wearing my cat with Stanley head, so I could obviously I could play my bento eye blink there and they'd be all out of sync. And some people are going to go, well, that's extra creepy. I kind of like that. And that's cool. If you want it to be synced, you want to go ahead and turn off that eye blink. And then you can come over here and you can check the sync button. Now when you first check this, the first thing that it's going to do is it's going to tell you that different heads are rigged differently for the different eye bones. And it doesn't know which animation set is going to work for sure. It defaults to set one, which is what you're seeing. And set one works fine for the Catwoman male heads that I tested, for the Daniel and for the Stanley. It does not, however, cause the eyelids to close enough for the Catwa female heads. So what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to do the test. If you do the test, then you can choose, okay, which of the three sets am I going to try? And you can click try one, and it'll play the eye close animation. And if it closes your eyes all the way, then you're good. You just click use one. If they aren't closed all the way, then you can click try two. And it'll reset the eyes and it'll close them. You can see how much more the female eyes require because the try to is set up for the Catwa female heads. On the male heads, that causes the upper eyelash to come all the way down here and poke out of the cheek. It looks a little strange. I also included an even further one with the animation set 3 that actually pulls the eyelids down even more. That may work for other heads if the set 1 or set 2 doesn't work well enough. Anyway, once you say, okay, I found one that works, and you tell it to use one, it'll say, okay, and it tells you right here, if you ever need to change the setting, click on the Simple Needs logo on the HUD, choose the Bento Sync menu, and that was the other menu that we saw earlier. This will take you right back to that test and try thing. If you know you're going from male head to female head, then you can just tell it, okay, go ahead and do set two. But now we're set so that set one is our default animation setting, and that animation setting is in the eye. It's not in the HUD. So once you get things going, you don't have to wear this HUD if you don't want to. But now that things are synced, if we play our blinks, there you go. We get a synced Bento blink, and it syncs to the frame animation blink. And most of the time, it looks really great. Uh, right now I'm zoomed in and I've been doing a lot of stuff in Second Life and Firestorm is kind of being pissy with me, but the sync stays pretty strong most of the time. Now, there's another setting here that's called the look. And what this does is it emulates the kind of natural looking around animation that you get if you're uh, not playing a static pose. Um, some people are going to want to use this and some people aren't. I actually thought it was pretty cool because it kind of brings the whole head to life. And the more sinking that you have between the third eye and your regular eyes, the more you look like all one organism, right? Now, all of these features do use up a little bit of script clock time. It's not very much. Even with all the animations running, um, you're talking about, you know, like a .02, .03, 0.04 milliseconds it's way down there um, and that's if you're dealing with a laggy sim but if you want to drop your script consumption to bare minimum just lock your pupil dilation set a static eye pose turn off the look and the scripts will wind down to like nothing you're talking about 0 .006 uh, or less script consumption um, you don't have to worry about deleting scripts. There are more than one script in each of these components, and the reason for that is, is when I had it set all up with one script, if you went and made a change uh, to the uh, to any of the material settings, if you were in mid dilation, you had to wait for it to finish dilating before you saw the change happen. So. I figured, you know, it's worth the trade-off. You're talking about no real increase in overhead. Yes, there's a little bit more script memory allocated for you, but the difference between one script and two scripts and three scripts is, is pretty negligible. So, 
it is not a big deal. But um, there you've seen the features for the third eye. And like you said, you've got a, an Omega compatible eyeball, just like on the animated mesh eyes. You have a compa co Omega compatible skin applier, an Omega compatible tattoo layer, even Omega compatible lashes. So you shouldn't have any problem matching it up to your avatar, whatever your favorite avatar may be. Now this is the horizontal eye. I am actually going to be working on a vertical eye. The reason I didn't do the vertical eye first, even though I actually thought that it would be a little bit cooler, is when you turn the eye vertical, you get a weird effect on the eyeball itself because like my eye textures are done, most Omega eye textures have got shadow. And that shadow comes down to about almost halfway on the eyeball. And if the eye is slit vertically, that means that the whole top part of the eye is in shadow and that looks a little strange. And if you rotate the eye 90 degrees, that doesn't necessarily give you the kind of symmetry that you want. And again, the eye shadow has a tendency to fall through halfway in the middle and it's not really symmetrical when you turn it 90 degrees either. So when I set up the vertical third eye, I'm going to go ahead and set up some special textures for the third eye that match textures that can be applied to the other eyes. And for those people who want to use those, they can use those. Of course, if you're using a texture like this one, it's not going to matter because the black sclera is not really going to show the shadow, so that'll work great. But so the vertical third eye is next. And that's going to be coming up here pretty soon now that I've nailed down all the coding on this stuff. Anyway, I hope that you will enjoy your animated mesh eyes and your animated uh, third eye. I really think that this is really timely. A lot of people are going to enjoy using this for their Halloween get-ups and Second Life this year. If you've got any questions, never hesitate to shoot me an IM. Catch me on Facebook. Send me a note card. Whatever you feel like doing. Thank you for your time. Until next time, stay sinful.